It is the Worst of the Riot podcast. This is the Tuesday, June 27th edition. If you've never watched, watched the Worst of the Riot podcast before video version, today's the day to do it. Because look at me. It's a special day. It's a special day. Yeah. You got that that hat off. I got the hat off. This is what it looks like underneath. Just for this moment, because I just did get a haircut, so I thought I should let you see some of it. Uh, I'm already noticing... My forehead has tripled in size compared to what it looks like when I have a hat on. No, so I don't know good. if that's particularly flattering. It looks good. But I'm happy with the haircut. Yeah, I, I think it looks great. I like to get my haircut, I think, a little bit shorter than I really truly love it because then it buys me more time before, you before have to the next one. time I have to go get another one. Yeah. So I think, like, you think it looks good today. I think, like, a couple weeks from now, two weeks from now, I think it's going to look primo i mean you're looking like you're looking like a young brad pitt is that is that right do you think I look like a young you brad look like pitt? a like a young orlando like which, which, orlando bloom which movie brad pitt Ooh, that's a good question if i had to go through let me see see because once uh, this is not young brad pitt but once upon a time in hollywood brad pitt is like prime like if i could look like that uh, i guess i'm happy to look like any brad pitt let me be honest if I look like prepubescent Brad Pitt, you I'm look like Moneyball Brad Pitt. Moneyball Brad Pitt. Like that's like twelve years ago. Uh huh. I can't give you like the 1990s. So I look Brad like Billy Pitt. Bean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I, I mean, that's a compliment. I will take I it. I can keep going through. I yeah. see Orlando Bloom. Orlando Bloom. Gran Turismo, Orlando Bloom, or Pirates of the Caribbean, Orlando Bloom. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't even know what other movies he's in. Orlando Bloom? Yeah. He's in uh, Spy Kids, isn't he? Is he in Spy Kids? I think he's in Spy Kids. I don't know if I would remember that. Uh, Let's see here. No. Who else do I look like? Go on. Do I look like that guy? Bradley Cooper? Do I look? No, that's a compliment. You liking that? I'm worried. If now, if I, as I start to to an, analyze it more, do I look like that guy? And this isn't necessarily an insult to him, but it's not just not my goal. But do I look like that guy that dresses up in a suit and reviews food on YouTube? Dresses up in a suit and yeah, reviews food? Yeah, you never seen that guy? You know what I'm talking about. Suit review food guy? Yeah. He wears like a fancy suit. He's dressed up. Oh my gosh, you do. No, no. You look just like him. What's his name? His name's John Jurassic. Do I look like him? Yes, you do. Oh my gosh. That's so weird. He looks so creepy in this except, picture. Except he is wearing an actual tuxedo. Why and do his I'm eyes look like that? A Canadian tuxedo. How did you get that? You people need to Google this. John Jurassic. This guy's a creepy looking guy, though. But he looks have, way creepier than you. I don't have my hair that exa- I mean, like. I don't have it slicked back like that. His beady eyes are killing me. Look at his body. Is that real? Dang, how are you going to go from me comparing you to Brad Pitt and Bradley <laughs> Cooper to you showing me this, and this is the most accurate one yet? Nobody probably just had seen that until I mentioned it. And John now, Jurassic. Yeah. It's called The Report of the Week. The Report of the Week. All right. And this guy, I mean, wow, hey, that's spot on. He's fairly successful. I wish I could put a picture of that next to you right now. He's done okay for himself. No, he's done grand. He just looks so creepy. Yeah. Like, when I was comparing you to to Bradley Pitt, I was just going off based off hair. Bradley Pitt. (laughs) Bradley Cooper, based off hair. Uh Uh-huh. You know, that slicked back look. Yeah. I typed in slicked back hair celebrities. Uh Uh-huh. And I popped up what your hair looks looks like. Mm Mm-hmm. And then you come up with just a total face match of this John Jurassic (laughs) guy. And well, I'm his eyes are blue, loop. aren't they? So his eyes are crazy looking. Yeah. He looks like he could have killed somebody. That's what he looks like in these videos. This is wild. All I'm right. for it though. So you see why I wear a hat? Oh no, you have good hair. I don't know why you wear a hat. I think it 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 makes me look less like John Jurassic. See if that's the look you're avoiding. Yeah, I understand. Uh huh. But at the same time, let me just. Uh... Yeah, give it the whole look. Oh no, I was keeping the hat off. No, no, this is. And now you would I'm never consider you would now you look at me, you would say no one would say John Jurassic. Yeah, it's true. All right. You look better. I mean, I I, I like it both ways. You have good hair. I do great have great hair. I, I appreciate that. You're I like think you even I do. have hair. It's uh I, I 
sure I am. I'm not that old, but sure. I know, uh, but most people have. If you lose your hair, yeah, it's no, gone some, by the time like you're my age. Some people say you like uh, you got it, flaunt it for the hair. I guess that's what I should do. You should. All right. Well, fair enough. If you guys uh, Google John Jurassic right now and put it up next to Hudson's face, because yeah. goodness gracious, you got a good podcast for you today, and then uh, pre prepping you for tomorrow. It's Would You Rather Wednesday, where we're asking, Would you rather have just the best pool setup you can possibly imagine in your backyard or the best barbecue grill setup in your backyard, smoker or whatever you would like. Which one would you prefer if you could only have one, not the other? As we prepare for the good old 4th of July, uh -huh, where, where you more gonna, than likely you might have both. You might have both. You're bound to be doing at least one of them. 8772 Radio U or leave your, uh, leave your opinion in the comments and we'll, we'll catch you next time. We'll see you guys. Disinformation, mispronunciations, bad impressions. That's Hudson. This is The Riot on Radio U. If you deal with mild anxiety and or depression, have I got some great news for you. I've got the treatment you need that can reduce your anxiety, your mild anxiety and depression. You ready to hear it? Let's hear it. Laughter therapy. Sounds like fun. Humor therapy. They say laughter is the best medicine. It really is for mild anxiety and depression, according to new research from the World Health Organization, where they found that different types of humor therapy were effective in treating, yet again, mild cases of anxiety and depression. So just some, some laughter or what? Yeah, just getting some laughs in your life. Cracking up a little bit could be enough to, to make your mild anxiety and depression go away. Keep it at bay. So for laughter therapy, uh, you go to a laughter therapist? You go to the two, that they, the two options they highlighted. Number one, clown therapy. Okay, well, that doesn't sound like something it's for, that's real. It's for everybody. Clown therapy? It's not. It, it doesn't sound like it's for everybody. I, I, yes, but for those with mild anxiety and depression, it could be for them. It could be a way. It not only could. It is. It is proven effective in studies uh, conducted and researched by the World Health Organization. So, clown therapy involves uh, medical clowns lightening the atmosphere for patients with comedy. It's been widely embraced, and so that's an option. Clown therapy. Yes. I'm against that. You're anti-clown therapy. You don't think that would work for you. It just doesn't sound... I've never really thought clowns were that funny in general. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. How about then laughter yoga? They say the beauty of laughter yoga is it requires no... You can do it anywhere. Anywhere you can do yoga, you can do laughter yoga. How, who's making you laugh? Uh, it, you know, you have a yoga instructor and you know how they instruct you to, you know, do the different poses and then also the different breathing exercises. And then they'd also instruct you to laugh. Yeah, but you can't just laugh on command. You sure can. No, you can. Yeah. Watch. I can do it right now. <laughs> That's not a real laugh. That's though. what the yoga instructor may have you do in laughter yoga. But it's not going to help if you're just fake laughing. No, it is going to help. you got to feel the true joy they of a laugh. They have proven that it helps. No, it won't help. It, it helps. It can't help. This is hard science. I would say. From the World Health Organization. You know how good it feels when you like really like crack up laughing where you're like yeah. crying you can't stop you get like a good laugh in it feels and great once you finish it you're like man that was a good laugh i haven't had one of those in a while uh -huh. that's what you need you need one of those laughs that that would be helpful which no clown is gonna give you uh -huh. and no yoga is gonna give you that either well you know what if you do need that i have some great news I can definitely recommend a few shows that would do that for you. That would just go ahead and yeah. crack you up like that? Yeah. I mean, you're not listening to one, but I'll let you know. Not this one. No. <laughs> you won't hear a show like this anywhere else. And that's probably for the best. The Worst of the Riot. Radio U. You, uh, if I were to say to you, Isaiah, the trend of beer tanning, what does that sound like to you? Sounds like drinking a beer, 
and tan. While you tan? Mm-hmm. That's, that seems to be a trend every summer for a lot of people. Yeah, it does seem like to be a, to be a trend. Yeah, but that is, uh, that is not what beer tanning is. Oh. Now, when I saw beer tanning, tell me if you think this is stupid. I thought beer tanning was the idea that you tan until your skin is the same shade as your beer of choice. As your preferred beer. So yeah. if you like a light beer, maybe a little lighter. That would be a risky business if you mm-hmm. like Guinness, though. Oh, it would be dark. <laughs> yeah. Real dark. That would be that would be problematic. But what beer tanning is is actually neither of those things, but it is supposedly a real trend going around on TikTok, and I have the TikTok clips to prove it. That uh, is actually where you grab a beer or or three and you pour them on yourself, rub them into your skin, and the beer serves as like tanning oil to enhance your tan. Interesting thought process. Uh huh. But I've got here, and what do you think? Do you think that'd be guys or gals doing that? Girls. I thought I thought it sounds like something so dumb only a man would try it. See, but I feel like girls sure care enough, more about their tans, right? Yeah, they do, but don't you care? You care about your tan? I do, but I feel like I wouldn't be as, as likely as a woman would to to go the extra lengths to get tan. Actually, to be fair, I have uh, both men and women doing it, but I have more women, more videos of women taking a beer, pouring it primarily on their legs, rubbing it in. And using that as as their tanning oil. They say it's a it's a tanning secret unlocked. And it does make more sense for a gal to do it because gals, I think, are less likely to even drink the beer. <laughs> okay. So I feel like it's more of a, a more of a guy's drink. So on that hand too, maybe they're more likely to just pour it on themselves instead of just drinking it. It could be that could be possible. I also just I'm entertained by in so many of the videos, I guess it makes sense, but it's corona beer. And so kinda to me it's just feel like, well, I wouldn't drink this. So I'll pour it on me. Pour but it all over me. Nevertheless, um, this might be a shock to you, but experts are saying that you shouldn't do it. Really? Yeah, not advised. Not advised. First of all, uh, now there, is, there could be some truth to the idea that pouring beer on yourself would actually help your tan. Because according to some, they say that the way the hops in beer interact with your skin actually could boost levels of melanin. Okay. So there is some, this is based in some fact and some truth. However, um, it would also increase your risk of getting sunburned, putting beer all over your skin. Oh, because it works so well. Yeah, that's right. It works too. <laughs> it actually works too well. Uh, and of course, skin cancer in the long run. But think about this. This is so obvious that if you're pouring beer on yourself, you're going to get sticky and you're going to attract different types of wildlife, insects. Squirrels. Possibly. Seagulls. Birds. You think seagulls yeah. aren't going to be attracted if you're starting to pour uh, to pour who knows what kind of beer all over yourself? Mosquitoes. That's yeah, the biggest for one. sure. Definitely mosquitoes. Yeah, if you're by a lake, <laughs> you're pouring oh, beer no. on yourself. Big mistake. You can't do that. Big mistake. So, I don't know. Do you buy the? I mean, again, we clearly have videos here to show that people are doing this. But do you think it's really a trend? Because I know, like... Is it a trend, like a real trend, or is it like a Tide Pod challenge trend? Tide like, Pod. You think so? Yeah. Nobody you know is doing it? Nobody I know is doing this. Seems real ridiculous. You nope. would never want to pour a beer all over yourself. It's just you know sticky. how sticky that'd be? It, I can't imagine it. Even if it, you got the best hand of your life, would it really be worth it to sit there and get the stuck stickiness? to your chair? Yeah. No, it would not be worth it. And then it would wash off in the water as soon as you got in the water. Then you had to reapply. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's a lot of waste. The of only beer. thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Watch night one, the season premiere of The Bachelorette last night. Isaiah, I'm counting on you, hoping that you can fill me in on all of the antics, and the suspense, and the intrigue of Bachelorette season, uh, whatever season they're on, 23, 29? I think it's 23, something 23. like that. 23. How did it go? I don't go? know. It's a lot of them. It's a lot. You know. So I'm, many happy women. I know. I'm going <laughs> to struggle through this yeah. season. After night one, I know this is going to be a tough one for me. It's not that there's anything wrong with Charity. Uh-huh. But the I just, Bachelorette herself. There's just something that's just like, I don't love. Okay. And so night one, cringy per usual. 
as you can possibly imagine. Yeah. All of the first impressions, guys stumbling over their words. You get 20, tr- 25 guys all trying to, to win over a woman's heart that they've never met before. Yeah, they're, they're going to have some awkward interactions. They're all introducing themselves in like the most ridiculous ways ever that you can imagine. So uh-huh. not exactly the, the smoothest of night ones. But the big story was that Charity's brother made an appearance. Oh, yeah? He's one of the contestants? Or? Not one of the contestants, okay, no. Good. That no, would be, no. That would be unusual. No, he like was pretty much like undercover the whole night, serving as the bartender, oh. trying to listen in on the guy's conversations, right? So, so they need his approval. Is that Precisely. the idea? That he's got to sign off? That's what it was supposed to be. But then, I like that, actually. Yeah, right? And then on, on night one... The big thing is the first impression rose, right? Okay. So that essentially like moves you along no matter what. And if you get the first impression rose, that means that you gave the best first impression, obviously. Yeah. And the guy that Charity gave the first impression rose to was also the guy that her brother like approved of the least. Uh Uh-oh. So that's how it always goes, right? Typical. So on brand there. Yeah. Who could have foreseen that coming? Yeah, exactly. So for her, it was uh, Brayden. Who got the first impression, Rose? Brayden. Yeah, and then her brother essentially said that she he thought that Brayden was a little bit arrogant. A little bit arrogant about mm. how he how he carried himself on night one. Some women like that, apparently. Anyways, uh, Brayden wasn't one of the names. Yesterday in the uh, opener of the Worst of the Riot podcast, we went through and kind of picked out some of our, our pre, pre-show pre faves. I, yes. I'm confident Brayden was not on one of our lists. No, he was not on either of our lists. No. Does anybody, does anybody get eliminated on night one, though? Yes, they do. Oh, yeah? Who was that? There were eliminations night one. I'm looking at our list yesterday to see if anybody that we had get eliminated. Because I had John Henry uh-huh. and Aaron B. And you had... I had Nick. Yep. Did Nick make the cut? Nick, no, Nick did not make the cut. Nick is Nick is a gone already. Nick is already gone. Oh, no, come on. And he was your favorite too. No, no, Nick was my least of the three favorites. You said he was the most. No, my most favorite was Chris S. Chris S. Chris S. Chris S. is gone. No, you're kidding he me. Didn't make How many it people did they eliminate? But they eliminated. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, like six or so. Why'd you bring so many people on just to eliminate them? Well, right they brought away? on 25. Yeah. And they get rid of six of them. Why didn't you do like one per episode? I thought that's what they did. No, that's what they, they eliminate. Like the first night, there's 25 guys there. Yeah. They got to cut it back to like 19 or so. Uh huh. And then after that, they started eliminating less and less. All right. Well, don't break my heart. Don't tell me that my other favorite pre show. No. Caleb A. Caleb is still holding on. Oh, good. He's my one last hope. Yes. And both of mine, Aaron B. Uh-huh. And John Henry made it tonight, too. <laughs> but you went two for three on, on night one, getting guys mm, knocked out. Charity and I just have different tastes in men. I guess what so. What can I, mean, I say? Two of the six that you... There were six elimination, eliminations. Yeah. And you picked two of them, which is pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, but it was a star-studded night one. It- the only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Is it too early to start fireworks? Yes. It is? It's Tuesday. Yeah, we're one week out from the 4th of July. What are you doing tonight firing off fireworks? Yeah. What's so special about tonight? <laughs> I don't What's know. What's today? But- the 27th? No. I'll tell you, let me ask you this. What was so special about last night? Nothing. Nothing. And yet, people in my neighborhood, fireworks. What a waste of money. Is it a waste? It's a good time. Yeah, but. I think. This isn't like their true them. party. No, no, was that their 4th of July party last no, night? No, they, uh, they did not start last night. They started Saturday. And they've just been firing off every night? Uh-huh. And See, I, I, don't, think that's I don't think it's going to stop. Money. I don't think it's going to stop until... At least one week from tonight will be the like final night. One firework a night? It's or? like the 12 days of Christmas except with fireworks. That's okay then. You think so? If you fire off one a day. No, they're not doing, be... they're doing more than that. Okay, but that's a waste of money. They're doing probably, that's I'd not say they're like rolling five. It, it's not like a marathon. They're rolling it then. Good for them. Fireworks think, are expensive. I don't know if they're rolling in it. I think they spend a decent portion of their budget. 
for the, on fireworks for the month of June, just on fireworks. Is hey, I good think. for them. Yeah. If that's your thing. That's your thing. You know. Yeah. No. Uh, but no. I. Yeah. I, so the town that I live in, they did their fireworks a week early. They did them this past weekend. That's so. Silly. I think that opened the door for a lot of people uh, in the neighborhood to also just start shooting them off themselves throughout the week. But they're doing it on weeknights, which is wild to me. If you did it on Saturday, that'd be one thing this past Saturday. But I've got people firing them off again last night, uh, two nights ago, a weeknight thing. They're doing it. Yeah, that's that's silly. It's kind of wild. You can't do it till at least Thursday. Thursday? Is the Thursday cutoff? for sure. I think it's Thursday's the start of the weekend. I think if we're being reasonable, let's just let's just wait till Friday. Friday. I think that's reasonable. Well, we're not being nobody's being reasonable. They started shooting them off last weekend. Yeah. So we gotta extend it. Yeah, um, I've got I've got a couple of fireworks qualms. I know it feels a little early because the Fourth of July for not it doesn't feel early for my neighbors, but it feels early for a lot of people. But I've got a couple things. It's not too late to to make Fourth of July better, right? Oh to make no, the, you need to start making your Fourth of July good right now. It's not too this late. This is your chance to make the Fourth of July fireworks this year a, a more of a spectacle. And so I have I have two things that. I think can be done to improve fireworks. One, just the simple fact of, and I've said this before, fireworks, there needs to be some innovation. Some newness? Every year that I've gone to see fireworks, whether it's at Disney World, the Niagara Falls, just here in town, wherever you go to see fireworks, how different is it? It's never different. In my entire lifetime. It's always the same. Yeah, we, we in my lifetime, phones have improved vastly. TVs have changed, uh, cameras, just uh, the the way that everything is improved. Cars, the things cars can do now versus what cars could do when I was a child, it's unbelievable. And yet fireworks have never changed. Not a single, not a single bit. They've been the same for like, it feels like hundreds of years. Yeah, <laughs> since they were invented in China or whatever years ago. So I think, first of all, somebody needs to put some effort into that. Second of all, what's the best part of, the, of a fireworks show? The finale. Yeah. So why is why don't we make the whole show a finale? Why do we waste time with shooting off one at a time for like 20 minutes? What's well, the build up, you know? Yeah, but I think we should just bypass that because everybody just gets bored. Everybody's just waiting for the finale. And what do you say? What do you say like three times throughout? This must be the finale. Exactly. They got you on the edge of your seat. It's working. No, it's working. Why, why can't we it's just working. have the whole thing be the finale? It'd be a lot no. more fun. Save everybody a lot of time. Yeah, but you don't want to watch fireworks for five minutes. If you're you're driving to like whatever your local fireworks place is, uh, you're trying to get a parking spot. If you show up and you set down the chairs and it lasts for three minutes because yeah. they just do a, a finale, then you're leaving. You're like, was that really worth it? You want the whole drug out, like 30 minute <laughs> show where they're shooting off one at a time and they tease you a little bit and they string you on the back yeah, to one at a time. They do the fake finale. Tease you yeah. again one at a time and they give you the finale finally at the end. And then you leave feeling real satisfied. I don't know. I think the buildup is all the time you spend sitting there waiting for the show to start drinking lemonade. Yeah. You know, paying $8 for a lemonade and just waiting, sitting in a lawn chair like a goose. Getting your spot. Yeah, getting your spot. Exactly. You got to get a spot. A good <laughs> spot. Get a good spot. We're going to see it better than ever this year. <laughs> We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio you. This is crazy. In South Korea, tomorrow, everyone is going to get younger. Younger. Everyone is going to become one to two years younger. Just like that. How's that? Get a load of this. In Korea, they keep track of age like this. The day you are born, you come out of the womb, you're one year old. Well, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> it's, their, it's how they've done it. It's their culture. Forever? It's they've their culture. It that way forever? It's a long time they've done it. What? That's how they've done it. Why would they do it that way? Because that's just how... I don't, I don't know. I'm not Makes Korean. Makes no sense. That's how they've done it. But it, it doesn't stop there. You think that's crazy? You, you, the, you, when you, okay, so if you were born today in Korea... Okay. You'd be one year old, right? June twenty seventh. Got uh-huh. it. Today, if you came out of the womb, if you gave birth to a child right now in Korea, it would be one year old. Okay. It would turn two 
January 1st of 2024. It's like six months from now. Yeah, when the new, we would turn to when we hit the new year. That's everybody's age changes, even though that's not their birthday. Their birthday, it's still the 27th, but they become a year older as far as the law is concerned. January 1st. The new year. The new year. New year, new you. New, older you. However, tomorrow, South Korea joining the rest of the world in keeping track of age the regular way. Individual birthdays and whatnot. Some would say the correct way. In Korea, they now will agree that it is the correct way. So, but you think about it, right? If you're born in Korea today, you're a year old, but tomorrow you'll be zero because they'll go back to doing it the right the, the way that everybody else does it. Got it. So you're going to go back and be like six months younger? I mean, you'll still a be... A year and six months younger. Uh, Depending on when your birthday is. Yeah, that's right. Got it. Okay. So if you were born... So, so you think about this. Tomorrow, some people will become two years younger in Korea. Yeah, that's much younger. That's a whole... I mean, I have to imagine they're accounting for that. It's not like you were 18, but you are reversing age back to 16, so now you can't do the things an 18-year-old could do. I imagine that they've adjusted. Like, I imagine... Their grandfather then, you're thinking? Yeah, well, yeah, I imagine... Or, so what, like driving? Yeah. Drinking? That's right. I don't Being think in the military, things I'm like that. I'm pretty sure you're not going to have, like, your, your license, your driver's license, for example, taken away because of this de-aging process that they're yeah. going through. But it is still... It is still... It, I, I just... I didn't even know there was a different way to keep track of age. I didn't the, know that was allowed. Yeah. That's how they've done it for a long time. Uh, but I guess they've seen what some would say is the error in their ways. Or just not even the error, just the confusing nature to the rest of the world. Yeah, when everybody turns a year older on January 1st. Yeah. I mean, that, it's I mean, not, make it e that it's not makes, crazy. That makes that part easy to keep track of, actually. Yeah. But everybody's getting a year older. That doesn't necessarily make it less confusing. No, you need that individualization. Yeah. Coming up on your birthday. My birthday's in like two weeks. I'd be bummed. Actually, I would be kind of excited if I didn't get older. Yeah. If you were uh, Korean, you'd get younger. That sounds great to me. Yeah. Well, now you know. I think that's an interesting fact. I wonder if there's any other places in the world that have a different way of keeping track of age. Being born and being one year old. That's just silly. <laughs> But it's also confusing being zero years old to That's me. That's true. Add a little riot to your Instagram feed. Follow at Radio U Official. The Riot. Radio U. And we're doing a food fight. Are you ready for the new Mountain Dew Baja Blasts? Plural. They have two new editions of Baja Blasts out in stores. You may be able to find, although I'm warning you now, you might have a difficult time finding them. These ones. I actually had to pry out of somebody's hands. Fight an old woman off with? Uh, yeah, I had to hit her with a monkey wrench. There you go. Because, no, they were, these were, I, you will notice, first of all, that I have cans of one variety, that is Caribbean Splash, and then a individual 20-ounce bottle of the other variety, which is Passion Fruit Punch, and that is because people were, when I went to the Walmart that had these, people were buying them, like, the people had carts full of Mountain Dew, the new Baja Blast. It's not like there was a sale on them or anything. People just saw them and wanted them so badly because it's a new Baja Blast. And they smell real good. They do they smell, smell good, like don't they? They smell like a Baja Blast would. Yeah. Real exciting. So uh, which one would you like to try first? Passion Fruit Punch or Caribbean Splash Baja Blast? Let's do the Passion Fruit first. All right. That is the purple one. Are Passion Fruits purple? See, I would have assumed that was the pink one. Yeah, no, that is, uh, this is the Passion Fruit Punch, as you and all can see on the Radio You Riot Facebook page and YouTube channel. Passion Fruit Punch, do with a blast of natural and artificial passion fruit flavor. I don't know if that's going to be good. I don't feel like I typically like passion fruit. I don't know. I have no idea what a passion fruit is. I don't know. We're going to find out. All right. So let me smell this thing. Oh, it smells great. Tastes great, too. A lot That's of flavor. Right. That's a lot all right. Of flavor. Does it surpass a regular Baja Blast for you, though? 
I mean, it's right there. It tastes awful similar. I'll, I'll call it decent, is what I'll call it. Decent for a Mountain Dew, which means it's great for a soda overall. But as far as my Mountain Dew standards go, I think I can, I can do better with a regular Baja Blast or a few of their other top-tier flavors. I feel like, as of late, though, their special edition ones, mm-hmm. the Mountain Dew ones, have not been good. Except for that, uh, the Bomb Pop one that we had one time yeah. and then I've never seen since. Probably because it was a similar scenario. If you ever saw it in stores, you bought their entire stock of it, is what people were doing, because that was real good. And uh, we were never able to see it, at least for me personally, never able to see it again. All right, so that's the Passion Fruit Punch. And we also have Caribbean Splash, which is due with a blast of natural and artificial guava flavor. You ever have a guava? I don't think I have tried a, a guava. I've had guava juice. I probably had juice, guava juice. I've never yeah. seen a gu- regular guava. I think guavas are pink like this, so that makes sense. They're like pink on the. Are they? Are they the ones that are pink on the inside pink and orange on the, on the inside, outside? Green on the outside. Green on the outside. I like. I like it. All right, this one smells even better to me. Doesn't taste as good though. You don't like that one as much. It just. It tastes different. This isn't as Baja Blasty as the other one is. It's also not as carbonated it's not it's a different can and it's fresh out of a can fresh out i just opened it you watched me open it a moment ago but maybe a can's different than a than a bottle Mm. i'm gonna say i like the passion fruit better neither of them have blown me away passion fruit's pretty close to blowing me away i think i think they're both solid um a pre they, I appreciate both of them. I think if I gave you the passion fruit mm-hmm. in a can that was blank, I think you would think it's just regular Baja Blast. No, no, yeah, no. you would. Baja Blast is lime. There's nothing lime about this. It, th- that is where, uh, where you would think it is. The Baja Blast. It's actually not Baja Blast. It's just Baja. Just old Baja. Yeah, it's Baja. I guess I should be clear about that. Mountain Dew Baja, Caribbean Splash, Mountain Dew Baja, Passion Fruit Punch. Rate them out of five. Quick. I'm giving the passion fruit punch probably like a 3.7, okay. 3.6. Mm-hmm. I'm giving the, uh, darn, I did them backwards already. The guava <laughs> is getting 3.6. Okay. And then the passion fruit punch is getting like a 4.2. I think I'm, I'm going to go 3.9 on the passion fruit and 3.7 on the, the guava, the Caribbean splash. I like it. Yeah. So for you, not Drinkable. good enough to buy. Drinkable, but I think I'd probably buy something else if I was if I had the whole soda aisle at my disposal. I think as it goes Mountain Dew wise, I think that the Passion Fruit Punch could be filled in for any of them with me. You want to finish the Passion Fruit Punch? Oh, we will <laughs> probably here in a little bit. I'm not I'm not finishing the bottle of it. No, no way. <laughs> it's too much sugar for you. Huh? Yeah. Find more Riot content online. Riot.radiou.com. Isaiah. You said you wound up watching uh, Brother Bear. I did. And upon reflection, we started to wonder, is that the saddest Disney movie of all time? It's up there. It's, it's, if you haven't seen Brother Bear, um, uh, some of the pivotal scenes in Brother Bear are some of the saddest that you will find in any movie that's meant for children. A lot of death, a lot of death in Brother Bear. (laughs) And so the question is, which Disney movies are up there in the sadness category? Text in at 8772 Radio U, the saddest scenes and moments in Disney movies, ostensibly movies that are meant for children and yet somehow so intense, so emotional, it doesn't feel like a child should be able to handle that. Yeah, I've got a couple of different ones. I've got like four, okay. I think, including Brother Bear. The one scene in Brother Bear that got me the most was when... Kenai, who like is the one who gets transformed into the bear, has to tell Coda, who's like the little like cub that's uh-huh. been following him around the whole time. Yeah, the Kenai was the one that killed his mom, which is like the saddest thing ever. Yeah, like, I mean, he, he tells like, a cub that he, and the, he thinks his mom's coming. Oh, it's a disaster. So sad. Yeah, and then they show like Kenai's brother coming down from the spirits and. Coda goes over and sees his mom's spirit. Oh, it's so sad. That's too much. It's too much for me. Like I was watching it. I was like, wow, this is so sad. You're a grown man. 
And you're upset by that. Yeah, it was it was upsetting. How did any child endure? How did any of us endure that? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, they should have known better. Maybe that's why that movie not not remembered as one of Disney's best, even though I enjoyed it. It's a good movie. It's a good movie. It's just too much for kids. Yeah, that one's sad. I also think this is like probably like a top two. This is probably my favorite Disney movie of all time. Yeah, which is the Fox and the Hound. Uh, my dog Jim, the inspiration of him, uh-huh. and. Uh, when they drop ta- uh, Todd off in the forest, you don't remember that part. They leave him in the forest. Yeah, like when when they have to like let him go. Yeah, he's like an adult, and they play this on like good goodbye may seem forever. Uh huh. And Todd's mom's like driving him, and they're like her little buggy out there, <laughs> and then she like takes him takes him into the woods and like takes off his collar, and he yeah. has to like skedaddle. Oh, it's so. But sad. doesn't he get to go like reunite with that that? You know, he ends up like having like a wife and kids and stuff. Yeah, it's but, like we didn't know that at the time. Well, what did you think was gonna happen? Well, I just thought that he was just gone. I yeah. thought it was over. Like his days being a house fox were over. Chad That's ag- what I thought at the time. Chad agrees with you that uh, that fox and the hound always brings him to tears. What it's about a sad one? What about here's a clear one right here, Bambi, when the mom. Oh yeah, when the mom bites the bullet, as you as you could say. Uh, that's from Philip. Texted in that one to eight seven seven two radio U. More text to get to. I think uh, I need some time to think about this too. What are some other movies that may some Disney movies, some child movies for children that make you cry? Eight seven seven two radio U. This information, mispronunciations, bad impressions. That's Hudson. This is the riot on Radio U. Question is, what are sad scenes from Disney movies? Uh, stuff that's meant for kids, but for some reason, it's just so sad. Why are they, why are they showing kids why subjecting children to this stuff in cartoons? Isaiah brought up Fox in the Hand, and he's actually, during the song, was re-watching the scene from Fox in the Hand and having a cry over there. It was so sad. Yeah. I think it might be number one for me. That's, that's the saddest so one? I think it might be the... I think that one... And the brother bear scene uh-huh. are the two saddest ones I can imagine. But the Fox and the Hound one, it was like yet again my one of my favorite Disney movies growing up. So that one just hits my heart so hard. Yeah. What about um, Tim? Now this is not. I don't think it's technically a Disney movie, but it is for children. Iron Giant. Have you seen that one? I have. That's a tough one, but I'll tell you. And some of the, some of the scenes you can see it coming, you know. And I don't mean it, like the death. I mean the happy ending. Oh, like, yeah, coming back around. And so in Iron Giant, that's one of those where I was like, ah, I, you know, it's going to be okay. It'll all work out. Yeah, it's going to work out. How about Marka said, you remember the first Land Before Time? I remember the Land Before Time movies. I don't remember if I know the scene. 28 of them. I don't know if I remember the scene. I need to go back and look at this one. Didn't make an impression on you. Not sad, I don't know, but it's probably a sad scene. In Land Before Time, there's a scene where the mom dies. Littlefoot's mom. I would say, must pass away. So that's Marka. Kimberly says, this is an obvious one. Have we not gotten to this already? Uh, Lion King. Oh, yeah. Mufasa. Yeah, that one, that one still gets to me. That's a go-to, I don't yes. care what age you are. See, that's but sad. I'm not going to lie. The Lion King one didn't make me as sad. It didn't. It just made me mad. I was uh, angry at Simba. Simba? I was upset with him. Why are you mad at Simba? Because he's down in the gorge. I don't know. He I was know being that's, bad. That's what How makes many it so times? sad to me because he, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, nails that voice performance. I'll tell he you does. right now. I don't want to blame Simba, but at the same time, it's like, dude, come on. Yeah. What about uh, Tommy coming in with Coco? I haven't seen Coco yet. You haven't seen Coco? I haven't seen Coco. All right. I'll give you a pass until about Halloween, but by then you need to watch it because it's a good it's Halloween. Sad. Yeah, it's sad. Hello. He goes to like the land of death, whatever they call it. He goes to the land where everybody's is dead. Oh, dang. This so land of time scene death is sad. I just watched it. Uh, oh, that's a sad one. You're right. Owen chiming back in with uh, Bambi, which uh, several people say in that one. How about, uh, and Ryan also getting in with Lion King. How has nobody said this? The beginning of Up? Oh, yeah, you, I had that one listed mind? here. I had that yeah, one listed. that is the saddest one. That's pretty That's sad. That's as sad as it gets. Pretty sad. I also have another one. This is a little off the board. Oh, there's, uh, there's Kendra coming in with Up. How about Homeward Bound? You've seen that one? I've seen Homeward Bound, Homeward yes. Homeward Bound. That'll get me to tears if you're an animal lover. That's a tough one, isn't See, it? See, I think that the opening scene of Up is super sad. 
I had it on my list as like one of the saddest ones. The only reason that I don't know if it's number one is because like you're not attached enough to the characters yet. That happened like in the middle of the movie. Uh-huh. Most more, more of like a flashback. I don't know. I feel like if I was it's more attached to the characters. I mean, but it's still like the saddest scene. It's like the saddest possible scene you yeah. could make just about. I feel like that's why some of these other ones like Bambi and the Fox and the Hound don't get to me as much because I'm not very attached, attached to them. Attached to the characters, yeah. Because they're animated deer that don't even talk, mm-hmm. you know, type thing. So it didn't get to me as much. Uh, Justin says the movie Onward. D says this is one I thought of at the beginning of Tarzan when Tarzan's parents get killed and then like the mom gorilla whatever her name is comes in and rescues him that's and sad. he has no idea what's going on and she's taking care of that's real sweet what about in like Toy Story 2 when Jesse like gets left oh, when they play no. the Sarah McLaughlin song no. You, when she loved me, that's the toughest one. That's pretty sad. That's huh? the toughest one. Yeah, when she gets left into the tree. You had oh, real Sarah sad. McLaughlin to the mix. I think uh, you could yeah. put that over any movie scene, that's and I believe sad. I would be crying. Yeah, you toss in Sarah McLaughlin. It's just not really fair with the whole sadness feature that she brings to the table. <laughs> but yeah, there's a bunch of good ones. So many good ones. But for me, the saddest ones for me probably that was the Fox and the Hound. Um, I've also got here. I've never seen this. Anastasia. Kimberly texted that one in. Uh, Joy says is a good one too. Dumbo. Dumbo's sad. Dumbo is sad. The cartoon, not when they the newer take, one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they take yeah. the baby. Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness gracious. Gee, every movie on Disney is sad pretty much. I know it is. Unless you watch The Emperor's New Groove. That's happy all the way through. Yeah. We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio you. It's tough times. For designer handbag makers, they're finally getting what's coming to them because the handbag is going out of style. The ladies, not so into the purse, the pocketbook, the clutch, not anymore. Which makes sense. It was only a matter of time. Why do you say that? Because they just constantly lose them. Lose them? It's easy to lose. That little baggy that you hold like this in uh-huh. your hand, I feel like it's so easy to lose. You throw it over your shoulder. It's Misplace got, it. It's got all your important stuff in there. Yeah, but it's not like attached to the body. There's never like a, a good way to hold it either. Like the little ones, like can you even get it over your shoulder if you can? It's like in your armpit. No. So you're not into the, you're not a proponent of handbags, purses? Uh, not for me. Uh, and they, they're wildly expensive for no reason. They are uh, incredibly expensive. And they're going out of style, which is uh, something that these designer handbag makers are having to adjust to because women particularly no longer as interested in purses and clutches and pocketbooks and instead are turning their gaze towards fanny packs. Fanny packs are in. And backpacks. What do you make of the, of the backpack fanny pack trend? Well, the fanny packs are super in. They're so in. Lots of my gal friends are big into the fanny packs. Like, uh-huh. way easier. And because they're big, like, they lose things all the time. Uh-huh. They don't, they don't lose things, but, but it's attached packs, to your body. Yeah, it's a literally attached at the hip. Yeah, you literally can't lose <laughs> it. Like, can't. it's attached to you. You can do whatever you want, and you'll come home at night, and that thing will still be strapped to your chest. Yeah. And if you have everything strapped in there. Strapped to your fanny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> If you got your stuff, if you kept on putting your stuff back in it, you'll have all the things you came out with. That's a... Uh, Pros to having a fanny pack. That on. is a pro. Do you think they're stylish, though? You think they're cute? I think on the right gal. Yeah. The right fit. The I, right ones. There's certain ones that aren't. There's other ones I think are more stylish, but I think it depends on, on your style. If you can pull them off or not. Like, could you pull it off? I would say maybe <laughs> a certain fanny. Like, yeah. maybe like a Canadian one a with Canadian a Canadian fanny, flag on yeah. it. Maybe like for like maybe like a if you wanted to go to USA like a USA flag what one. What about like a denim? A denim. Yeah, fan, denim fanny denim that fanny would fit back. too. I think that'd be a good one for you. I wouldn't go with like a Louis Vuitton fanny for you. That wouldn't really no. fit the vibe. When, but I think denim would. I'll tell you when I'm thinking fanny pack. What comes to mind is not something that I would consider cute or stylish. But seeing pictures of what fanny packs can be, that looks that looks wonderful. I mean, not looks for great. me personally. Not for me personally, but. A fanny pack, I can see how that could work. Backpacks, I have a tough time with. I, unless it's, it's purely, unless you're hiking, I don't really feel like a backpack is something that I would, I would want to be 
bringing around with me and I don't care as much. I've told my wife this, uh, not that she would ever get a backpack, but I'm just like, it's just, I don't, I don't like it. I'm just not a back. I feel the same way about backpacks as I feel about sandals. Like why? See, the backpacks, I think the backpacks they're referring to more are, mm -hmm. are the little ones. Cuter ones? Yeah, they're like, they're literally Petite. like, they're like as big as my hand. Okay. Like how big these, they're kind of like a fanny pack. Yeah. But they just back. have it on their back. And a lot of the, yeah, uh -huh. a lot of my gal friends wear those too. They don't wear like regular backpacks, as yeah. you would imagine. They're literally the size not, of your hand. That's how like big they are. Not like a sport. You can fit in there like chapstick, three pieces of gum, and whatever else girls have in their bag. Their yeah. phone, I guess. And maybe they like a credit card if they use one of those. Those are the things that they that they would have in there. The numbers, Not much. The numbers here don't lie. Only 39% of women under 35 carry a, a purse or a handbag anymore. Yeah, they're going fanny yeah. pack, backpack. They're going out. My wife doesn't carry any. She just gives oh, me just, all of her stuff. You just take care of that, yeah, huh? Uh-huh. Uh -huh, I like so, your stuff. So then I have to carry two wallets and two phones all there the time. But just that's all, all your right. pockets. Yeah. That's where the cargo is coming handy, baby. <laughs> yeah. You won't hear a show like this anywhere else. And that's probably for the best. The worst of the riot. Radio U. I don't know if you can tell, Isaiah, but I got a haircut yesterday. I can tell. I got several. It looks great. Several hairs cut yesterday. If you'd like to see what it looks like, you're going to want to go to the worst of the riot uh, or the uh, Radio U Riot Facebook page and YouTube channel. Find our food fight today with the new Mountain Dew Baja uh, flavors. Find our Worst of the Ride video podcast for today, uh, and you can see what it looks like. Now, for you, Isaiah, I can trust you that uh, if my haircut looked really bad, you would tell me, right? I would. Yeah. Now, most people, like, if uh, I think, uh, like, if I'm walking around later today, I'm not expecting most of the people here at Radio U, if my haircut sucked, I think they'd probably still say it looked nice, right? Yeah, they would say it looks nice, yeah. Because we're kind of friends. We're, you know, we're like, we're co-workers. Acquaintances, we're, yeah. Yeah, acquaintances. We're they don't want to make you feel bad. No, because what purpose would it serve for for, uh, for like one of the coworkers here? To be like, that haircut stinks, man. Yeah, actually, man. it sucks. Yeah. But you, because we we worked so closely together, we're better friends, it would be important for you to tell me if my haircut looked really bad, because then I would know, oh, I need to do something about it. Yeah, so take your it hat would, off. It wouldn't feel mean. Take that thing <laughs> off. It wouldn't feel mean <laughs> if you told me that but see for anybody else that doesn't wear a hat all the time it'd be even more important way more important yeah like if, if i messed up my haircut got oh, a bad haircut goodness then i, I can't pull up a hat no do it you wouldn't i would need to say to you listen you gotta you gotta go back and get it recut you gotta shave it you know buzz it yourself you gotta, you gotta take some something. time off yeah you gotta go hang out in your house for a uh, while if you if you get a bad haircut uh you gotta have a few people in your life you can trust to do that for you so those are those people are your closest friends you don't want that to just be random people you want it to be people you know really well they can tell you some of the tough truths that maybe you don't necessarily want to hear and that's exactly what god wants to do for you god wants to tell you you know like because he sees every aspect of your life. He knows what's going on. And he knows if you've got a bad haircut situation that it should be addressed. He's not telling you to make you feel bad. He's telling you because he doesn't want you walking around making a fool of yourself. Jesus wants to help you through life. Jesus wants to make sure you don't get yourself into crazy situations where you look like a goof uh, and just wind up, you know, falling flat on your face. Nobody wants to have a bad haircut. Nobody wants to walk around thinking like they're a million bucks when they actually kind of looking insane that's what jesus is offering he's offering to be honest with you and if you're ready for that start talking to him let him talk to you find out more radiou.com slash free gift you've made it all the way to the end of the worst of the riot this show only exists because of support from listeners like you find out more and help out at radiou.com slash donate